Thank you so much for being a guest on Black Authors Matter TV. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So your book, did your book come out yesterday? It did. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, and it sold out too. Oh, oh that's that's good and in yeah. a way it's good and the way it's not so good i yeah. know uh when you sell out of your book and then people want it you know it's it's good but you wish you had some more to sell to the people oh no so, no um um there are more being um produced print. Print. you just right. did a good yeah. job with pre-promotion right. that's yeah, what that yeah. was right yeah in a couple of days there should be more going out so well, that's great. Well, I didn't mean like sold out forever, you know. <laughs> right. No, I know that. No, I mean it's always temporary anyway. Yes. But it's it's still there's a little bit of a space where you can't sell books if somebody asks you, "Oh, I want a copy," and then you don't have it. <laughs> that's, that's true. You know. So anyway, uh, Adrian, is this your first book? It is. Oh, okay. All right. Well, congratulations! We have two first time authors on the show tonight. So, yeah. but you're a painter, an author, a filmmaker, and you teach art education. So, uh, tell us about your career in art and okay. filmmaking, and then tell us about the book. Okay. So, um, I knew at the age of five that I was going to be an artist, and um, and that was because I was in kindergarten, and uh, you know, I had finger painting classes. And immediately when my hands touched the paint, I, I was kind of elevated into another arena. And I love the color so much that I started eating the paint because I thought I was going to start like oranges and apples or, you know, cherries. <laughs> and of course it didn't. And I stopped immediately, but I've never forgotten that feeling. And that's what paint is for me. The colors um, is transformative. So, um, however, my parents didn't want me to be an artist. Uh, my mom was okay with it, but my dad, he was like, you know, I got to pay for college. You need to get a job where you're not going to starve, right? Because artists starve. Starving artists. That's right. <laughs> and so um, I went to the University of Washington for communications and, but that still is always ebbing, you know, I wanna be a painter. And um, my dad happened to be a pastor of a church. So I also play the keyboards, right? I play the organ and whatever. And, um, you know, a PK, you know how we had to do a little bit of everything, you know, and- um, no, I'm one too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't play uh, the yeah. piano though. I uh, took yeah. lessons, but it didn't take. I'm a PN. I'm a I'm a preacher's niece. Okay. <laughs> PN. Now, I have never heard that. I just made it up. Y'all can hold on to that. Okay. Yeah. We can we can recycle that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but go ahead with your um. You were yeah. doing a little bit of everything, playing on the keyboard. So do you? Yeah. Do so then I wanted to. Uh, and then I and then I asked my dad. You know, can I? take music you know in college and it was like no secular music you know because um i come from a real strict you know background so that wasn't gonna happen long story short i ended up on my own going to the art institute of seattle and loved 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 it and um i knew i was going to be an artist and and it was still very hard uh, to get into art in the way that I wanted to, once I realized that I didn't really want to be a commercial artist. Mm. I did like my eighth, my last quarter in school, I, realized I did not want to be a commercial artist. I didn't want anybody to tell me what I had to paint or what I had to do, even though I did it, you know, I had to make some money, but it was not my calling. And so eventually um, I got into art in, one day I had a patron who said they love my art so much that they would, you know, sponsor me and pay my bills. Whoa. Oh, I know. You that never worried. happens. Yeah. And so that's in 2010. That's when I um, started as to be completely a full time artist. And um, the rest is history, as they say. 
So you've been a full-time artist since then? Yes. Wow. Wow. That was that was a great um springboard. Right. Yeah. Uh, when somebody's gonna pay your bills. <laughs> that's that's yeah. the whole, I mean, that's really it, you know. Um, it really is. I but, take a know, passion and be able to make a living doing it. Yeah, I, I really think it was, you know, it was a God thing, you know, it was God because that doesn't happen. And you know, being African American, you know, come on. That, that, <laughs> it right. was like a miracle, one of my miracles that have happened for me in my life, right? And um, but that got me to the place where I could say, okay, I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna do this. And and so that launched that. And um, I went on and uh, painted many paintings and been in many shows, uh, solo and group exhibitions. Um, about in 2018, um, oh yeah, well, I, I am a, I'm an ex-addict. That's another part to my story. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> but um, I uh, came out as uh, a lesbian. And of course, I was kicked out of the church and all that kind of thing. And um, before I knew it, I became an addict. This is a short version because it's a long version. It's really, really long. Is um, all of this during your journey of being a, a full-time artist? Yes. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And I um, I ended up um, be getting incarcerated. And um, so I tell you that story because in 2018, um, I was really searching for why I was chosen to be an artist. Yes, I, I could paint, you know, beautiful portraits. I can, you know, I mean, but it, I believe we're here for more than just ourselves. You know, I, I definitely believe we're here. We're supposed to help other people. And so I really, you know, started praying and, and meditating and trying to figure out what would God want me to do with my talent? And yeah, I taught people how to paint, but that wasn't enough for me, right? So um, it finally came to, me, came to me about after a year of searching is that I need to go to the, to the women's prisons and talk to the women, share my story of who and how I, you know, was who I am and also paint their portraits. Hmm. And I, at the time, I had a King 5 Evening Magazine, it's a local uh, TV uh, channel here in Seattle, who um, came and followed me to the prisons. One day, they saw my work. You know, I have a lot of work out there. And I had a journalist email me and say, hey, um, I like your work, and I like to do a story on you. And I, you know, I get all kind of weird people <laughs> who you know email me and stuff and say they want to do this and they want me to ship my work to them in in Yugoslavia or something you know I mean just bizarre <laughs> requests right? right so I didn't think much about it and I said okay right sounds great um tell me more and she was like so I'm um Diane Tori and I'm from King Five Evening Magazine, I want to do a story on you, blah, blah. Okay. And I said, well, how do I know you are who you say you are? And she was pretty much like, oh, I'll email you a picture of my uh, business card, right? And I thought, anybody can do that. I give out business <laughs> cards all the time. And, and I, at that point, I was done, right? I wasn't going to even talk to the person. And she came back with, oh, when I pull up, you'll see the van. Because it's King Five Evening oh. Magazine all over it. Okay. So I said, okay, yeah, I, I can work with that. And um, so she did a whole story on me. And about a year later, um, she asked me, what, what was I doing working on? And I told her I was going to the women's prisons. I was going to go talk to them, um, have, you know, some one-on-ones with the sisters. I only paint Black people. So I only 
um, I had to do a proposal to the Washington State uh, Correction Center for Women. And it took me a year to get in there where they would approve me to get in. And that's, you know, proposal after proposal. Why does this woman want to come in and talk to other Black women? Or I don't know. But it took that long. And I got in there. She happened to be, like, very interested in what I was doing. She followed me to the prison. And it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. And I decided that I want to go um, to nationwide and go to as many prisons, well, at least five, because I'd like to have about 60 paintings mm -hmm. in total. I want to do a documentary on that. And um, I'm always filming, you know, and, and um, I want to exhibit it in each city, but also um, I, I want their families to be included. All the women get a, a free portrait um, print of, their, of themselves and they get to write about who they are or at least who they want to become. And I include that with the portrait, with the exhibit. So- Okay, are these full body portraits or just like head shoulders? Head. Or is it different? It's different. Um, well, um, it, it, my first initial one was just um, the heads, you know, maybe their hands and stuff, arms, that kind of thing. Um, it's very possible that I may do some full body, but, you know, it's a, it's a lot more work in that, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm doing about, uh, I, the first round was 14 portraits. Um, so I'm trying to get about 60 together. So it just depends. So it okay. actually kind of sounds like um, eventually you found the purpose that you were looking for I through did. this work, through your art. I did. And what's so interesting about that, you know, in the Bible, it says your ladder will be greater than your former. And, you know, how we think, or I did, my mistakes, you know, how, how do I, um, how do I ever get past that? You know, and being able to help somebody realize that you can't get past it is definitely a mission of mine. And, you know, through my research, I found out that Black women are massively incarcerated, just like um, their counterparts, the Black male. And a lot of people don't realize it. And most women, they say 80% of women that go to prison are there because of their husband or boyfriend. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah trying to help them commit crimes and being an accessory um to whatever they may not you know it may not have been their idea it probably wasn't the idea but they're trying to help uh, yeah and the, and the sad part about it is you know the black woman or the woman is a basically the nucleus of the family and she has children um they said that it's um uh, it can be a five generational death for the family when she's incarcerated. And it mm -hmm. takes that many generations to get back to where they were. It is almost impossible for, for, for when a black woman goes to, to prison, she loses her children as a rule. And unless, you know, she has an auntie or grandmother, somebody can take care of them. But a lot of times they go into the system then those kids, they have kids, and those, and it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So um, when the woman is gone, it's very detrimental. And we know the black man when he's gone, that's detrimental too. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, um, it became a good thing though. It's it's not a sad uh, endeavor. It's a very uplifting endeavor. It sounds and like. I want to give the women their opportunity to be heard and seen. And that's what this is about. Um, you know how many people have never been, nobody ever cared of what they, you know, who they were or never encouraged them or supported right. them. And so your art kind of gave them a voice. Um, yes. So it let people, it let them introduce themselves as something more than what you see. Thank you. That's okay. exactly. Well, Beautiful. tell us about the, um, you, you received the, um, Governor Mike Inslee Art Award, and you're uh, 
joining us from the West Coast. Our, our first guest was also from the West Coast. Oh, and really? We, are, we don't have, like, most of our guests are from the East Coast. Yeah. But, and we know we do have people from the West Coast. Uh, we normally don't have two on the same night, but but it's you know it's it's interesting. Uh, she was from California, and um, you're in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what? Um, tell us how you got the art award. Oh, um, I had uh, done some public art in Renton, Washington, which is a suburb of Seattle, and um, he just loved what I did. It's it's uh, uh, some abstracts of, of flowers. Um, and what I did was I went to a manufacturer who could reproduce my artwork, put it on eight by eight feet by maybe 10 feet. And I had four of them and, and I had them all framed. Oh, so okay. I created um, Renton's first outside fine art gallery. Oh, that sounds beautiful. It does. It sounds yeah, I used yeah. to live in that area, so I'm happy about yeah, that. Yeah, you did. I remember you mentioning Renton before. You I've never been Renton, to Washington. Well, I actually lived in Tacoma, but um oh, I was yeah. basically all over the place. Yeah, Tacoma's close. It is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rhonda's lived in a lot of places because she's an army <laughs> brat. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That makes she's sense. been overseas. She's been in Belgium, Germany. Yes. Wow. Uh, Britain. I know you told me you went to yes, went Japan, to China, all, all those places. Oh, wow. You're world traveling. When I grow up, I want to do some of that traveling. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but I'm not quite there yet. So we want to make sure we know about your book, Dream right. Jump, um, that just came out yesterday. Do you have a copy of your book with you? Yes. You know, you sold out, you held on to one. So, we yeah, just, can, can you see? It? Come Put it in front of you. I think it's yeah, oh, there. We go. Right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, when you have the virtual uh, screen, uh, oh, yeah, uh, put it right in front, right in the middle there. Yeah, okay, there you dream go. Jumpers. Now, tell us about Dream Jumpers. Um, is it a, is it a young adult book? Is it a graphic? It novel? is. It's, a, it's, it's really crazy because, um, I never wanted to write a book, even though I was told I was a good writer. I wanted to illustrate, right? Doesn't it make sense? I'm an artist. Of course, mm -hmm. I want to illustrate. One night I went to bed, got up, and I had this full-blown book in my head. And, mm -hmm. and then I went and asked people, hey, you want to write this book? And I'll illustrate it. <laughs> and, and some people were like, yeah, sure. Couldn't get anybody really on board with it. And about two weeks later, I had um, sat down at my computer and I wrote the book uh, about 55, 56,000 words in two weeks. However, after I That's found out, mm -hmm. I found out that it was more of an outline <laughs> than it was an actual book. You know, I mean, in, in reality, I had a lot more work I had to do. And so eventually I had to hire um a couple of editors to help me um to get it to the place that it is today that but, must be a long book well yeah, it, you yeah. have an outline of fifty thousand words <laughs> a lot of people envy that because they can't you know that's right. a lot of words for an outline it's so only, you just have to fill it in some more and you know yeah it's only 238 pages Okay, well, that's a, that's, that's, a that's a pretty good that's level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I kind of thought it was small because I, I like those books, the saga books, you know, that have oh. generations and stuff. So, well, but this if is a for book a kid. Is good, if a book is good, long or short, it's good. There yeah. can be a short book that's not good or a long book that's not good. So, yeah. and vice yeah. versa, you can have a short book that's great. Oh, a long book that's wonderful too. Yeah, yeah. I just finished reading a five hundred page book that was outstanding. I love it. I gave it five stars, and it was Ooh. from a guest on the show. What was the name of it? The show is called "The Last Thing You Surrender" by Leonard Pitts Jr. The last thing you surrender. The last thing you surrender. It was outstanding. So, 
and you know, I read some small books that were equally compelling. Yeah. So yeah. you just never know. It's not about the length, it's about the story. Exactly. Yeah. And and the story is about a set of twins, little black kids who inherit the gift of dream dream jumping from their grandfather. And um dream jumping is the ability to be able to, to jump into other kids' dreams and help them find out who they're supposed to be and support them in real life so they can become who they were born to be. Oh, that sounds interesting. It does sound interesting. Mm -hmm. So is this, this is um, more of a young adult book, I'm guessing? It's kind of a middle grade teenager book. Okay. okay. So it's a sci-fi fantasy adventure and it's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. And but the other thing is the kids have to go through a lot of turmoil because their uh, mother was, she died when they were born and they have a father who's mean to them, um, but they have their grandparent, their grandmother um, that lives in the back of the house. So, um, it's it's a really it's it's an adventure. It's kind of a fantasy, but the 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 gist of the story is that I believe everyone comes into the world knowing who they're supposed to be, and along the way, either it's your family, your teachers, um, it's because of your gender, because of your race, because of your you know poverty or whatever. It could be because you're so rich. Um, you lose track of who you are. And this book is supposed to help children start being more aware of their gifts and for them to search and try to find who they really are. Well, it's interesting to me that you chose science fiction in order to, um, in order to convey this message because as you were telling your story, I didn't hear an interest in science fiction. But then when um, you talked about the story, then you said it was a science fiction story. So um, where did that interest come from? Well, I do love science fiction. I do. I, 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 I love science fiction. But I, I also think it's a part of the story because, of course, every you know story, there's an antagonist, right? You have the protagonist mm -hmm. and the antagonist. And these, these kids have to learn how to become dream jumpers before they can help anyone else. It's just not an innate gift. Um, and they have to understand what their gifts are and to hone those and become better. And so they end up going to the academy, the Dream Jumpers Academy of the world where all the other kids are twins just like them. Right. So everybody's a twin and it has to be male, female and it can't be two boys, two girls because you, they need uh, the 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 interaction of what a, a male perspective and a female perspective. So their grandfather had a sister has a sister who passed away, and they were both dream jumpers. And so they go to this place where they learn how to become dream jumpers, and um, they're being taught. And then they have a lot of obstacles that they have to come over, and go through, and then they have. I don't want to, you know, give a lot of the story away, but they have this this entity out there trying to stop them, and it becomes kind of sci-fi, really. At that point, I love the layers that you have in this story. I mean, there's so much going on. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's so um, interesting that you would pick that type of story. I guess when you're an artist or you're a creative, you're a creative, then that imagination really. Can well, yeah, I do, have, <laughs> I do have an imagination. But like I said, you know, um, I believe the book was given to me. Well, I never it, sounds, it sounds interesting. It sounds unique. Like it's not, you know, some, it's not a storyline that you've heard like a thousand times before. Um, <laughs> so yeah. um, that's really good. Now, is this, is this, are you planning to do a series with the book? You know, or have um, you thought that far? You know, I know sometimes when you do your first book, you just are excited, you're just ready to get it done. Book is yes. out there, and then people 
you know, readers will ask for more in the story. That's normally how it ends up happening when people do a series. People will want more. Well, initially I said, because this the writing this book is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I mean, it was incredibly hard on so many levels because I like to just let my imagination go. I don't really want to think about the structure so much if I don't have to. Lord have mercy. I mean, I learned so much about myself with this book. And I also learned that I'm not a quitter. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Well, I'm you know, it. when you learn it, now you know it. So your next I book. Thought it. I thought I wasn't, but I know I'm not now because there was no <laughs> reason for me to finish this book. There was no reason other than the fact that I know it was a gift from God. And that's the honest truth because I had no intention of writing any books. And, and I said, after this, I'm never going to write again. Well, I, I think I'm going to have to. <laughs> yes, you have to. You, you are an author now. Yeah. 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 Yes. And people will want to hear more from you. Yeah. Once right. they read this first book, they'll say, you know, I'm looking forward to reading more from her. Yeah. yeah. And I know we only have a couple of minutes left, but I'm just wondering, um, I know you have, that's your art on the front of the book, but did you incorporate your art throughout the book as well? Yeah, I did about 10, 10 illustrations um, in the book. And um, I also, I'm going to be making a book of the illustrations because that's really what I want to do is illustrate the story. Um, okay. But I got so deep into the, into the book itself um, that, I had, it was hard for me to do everything. So, yeah, like this is. Now who's oh, that? Okay, is is that you? No, this is Malia in the story. This oh, little girl. Okay. Okay. And um, her grandfather has been, her grandfather's deceased, recently deceased. And she keeps hearing these voices. That, and it sounds just like her grandfather. And so uh, she decides that she's going to, you know, find the voice because it has to be somewhere in this house. And so she runs all over the house. She can't find it. And eventually she just kind of, you know, the picture where she's just sitting there, she starts crying. You know, she's emotionally upset because she loved her grandfather and she can't understand why this is happening to her and why and what. Was her grandfather mad at her? Was he coming back as a spirit? She didn't understand that. So that's the first chapter. Okay. okay. Well, we're at the end. You of guys gotta read my book. Yeah, yeah well, I want to yeah. read it now. Yeah. yeah, you have to. You have to leave. You're leaving something. You you whet the people's appetite for your book. So yeah. if you can um, hold the cover up one more time and then tell people where they can get a copy of Dream Jumpers. Can the inheritance see? is a sub. Put it closer to you, I think. Yeah, uh, there you go. Oh, there okay. You go. Mm -hmm. Can you read it? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, it's Dream Jumpers, The Inheritance. And you can get it almost at any any bookstore, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kodo, um, Walmart, Target. It's on, on, on sale, so online and you can get the ebook so you can just get it you know it's still in uh, available just the the print's not so it's only 9.99 for the for the book okay. well you did a great job pre pre um advertising Thank um you. and it says a lot for a first time author to, to sell out of their first print run so congratulations on that and we wish you all the best with your future Thank endeavors you. Thank you so much ladies Thank you. Nice meeting you both. Thank you and congratulations on your book. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.